Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Planetarium show. My name is Jessica, I'm the director of the Planetarium, and with me tonight are two of the students who work with me, and I will let them introduce themselves, starting with Lindsay. Hi, I'm Lindsay, I'm a physics graduate student at UMD. And I'm Eli, I'm a physics undergraduate student at UMD. So after we talked about telescopes on Wednesday, which if you didn't see that and you're interested in telescopes, you can always go watch that in the, I think it's the video section of our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, tonight, we want to expand on that and take a look at how you can get into astrophotography or taking pictures of the night sky. Um, it's a lot of fun and a lot more simple to get into than you might think. And Lindsay's going to tell us all about that tonight. Um, before I pass it over to her, though, as usual, if you do have any questions throughout the show tonight, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Eli and I will be watching those and we'll let Lindsay know when those questions come up. We'll also have time at the end to answer questions as well. So uh, with that, Lindsay, it's all yours. Uh, so the picture behind me actually is one that I took of the Aurora um, down at Brighton Beach here in Duluth. Um, so at the end of this, hopefully you'll see that you can achieve this Aurora picture also. It is easier than it looks. Uh, so this is going to be a beginner's guide. So I'm going to not go into um, uh, things like time lapses and star trails and things like that, but just try to keep it really simple, the minimal things that you need to do some photography. Um, so there's kind of two different um, terms for taking pictures of the night sky. So we have night sky photography um, over here on the left. Um, taking pictures of the whole sky. And then we have astrophotography over here on the right, and that is taking pictures through a telescope. So we are gonna go over both of those today. I think it's a little bit easier to get started actually with my sky photography, um, mostly because you don't need a telescope. Uh, so I'm gonna start with that. Uh, so this is a picture um, that I took. Uh, I was down at Bryce Canyon National Park, which is one of the the darkest places in the United States. Um, and this picture has not been photoshopped or anything. Um, it was taken with my first tripod that I had with my DSLR, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, it was only a $20 tripod and I could get pictures just like this. Okay, so just to start out with, you need a camera that has an option to change the time exposure. So up here, this is a Canon, um, I think this is a T3, uh, similar to what I have. Um, it's called a DSLR, Digital Single Lens Reflex. You don't really need to know what that means though. <laughs> um, and then you need a tripod camera mount. Again, my first uh, camera mount was about 20 bucks and it worked great for me for years. And again, you don't need Photoshop. You don't need any um, photo editing software. Um, again, this picture, no Photoshop, just that cheap $20 um, tripod and my DSLR camera. Okay, so another option for a camera that has an option to change time exposure is potentially your phone. Um, Jessica's phone, she is nice enough to take some screenshots of her phone for us. Uh, she has an Android and she actually has a setting on her phone, um, the pro mode, where you can um, do things like change the time exposure. Um, then you would just need a tripod for your phone. Uh, I have an iPhone and mine doesn't do this, but I think there are some apps that you can get um, that can do that for you. Um, you also need a camera that can do manual focus. And you need, so at the very least, you need a camera that can do manual focus and a camera that can change time exposure and or ISO, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit manually. If you don't want to, you don't have to know what ISO is. You can just 
deal with the manual focus and the time exposure. Um, also, all of these different settings that you see on the back of the camera, again, you don't have to know what all of those mean. It, it looks really overwhelming and confusing when you first start out. But if you're just doing um, a time exposure change, you're just gonna click on, select this shutter speed setting um, and then change the time exposure right here. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to change anything else um, on this menu. Okay, so I put my camera into manual mode. That way I can do some manual focusing. So you have to do manual folk instead of autofocus because the stars are so tiny, um, the camera won't be able to see them to autofocus on them. You also, so here's the pro option that is on the Android phone that you select and then it gives you options to do time exposure um, and ISO. So this menu uh, is gonna show up right here on the back of your camera. Uh, you just click this menu button. Um, and then again, you just have to change this shutter speed time exposure. Um, and here is uh, the time exposure change on the Android. Okay, so you have your camera set up on your tripod and you have changed the time exposure, let's say to like eight seconds. So we can see the stars, but they're not in focus. Uh, so now we want to focus them. Um, I recommend doing about those eight second um, exposures until you get your camera focused, um, just so you're not waiting, you know, like 20 or 30 seconds every single time you're trying to take a picture to focus. So you take a picture, see how focused your stars are. Um, I also recommend not using live view. Just take a picture because what you can do with the picture is you can zoom in on part of the picture to get extra close to see how focused your stars are. Okay, so you adjust your focus by twisting the lens back and forth if you have a DSLR um, or adjusting this manual focus right here on your Android. Um, so again, take a picture. That way you can zoom in on some um, different parts or to make sure that it is super focused. This is actually pretty good, but this is the better. You can see really small pin pricks of light. After you get the um, picture focused, also just uh, learning from experience or <laughs> telling you from what I learned from experience, make sure you spend the time focusing because if you get home and you have a bunch of pictures like this that are out of focus, it's going to be really disappointing. So after you get your stars in focus, then you can go to your time exposure and increase it. This one was set for about 30 seconds. So I've got my DSLR on my tripod. I have the stars focused and I just set the time for 30 seconds um, and I get a picture that looks like this. Again, this has not been photoshopped or anything. It's just a picture that came out of my camera. Uh, okay, Aurora. So we do see Aurora here in Duluth uh, quite a bit, um, at least when the sun is being really active. Again, these two pictures um, of Aurora that I took down at Brighton Beach here in Duluth have not been edited in any photo editing software. Actually, I didn't have any photo editing software for like the first seven years that I did night sky photography. I just had my camera and my tripod. Um, so again, you're going to set up your camera and your tripod, you're going to get your stars in focus, and then you kind of just kind of play around with how bright the aurora you want. So 30 seconds is probably going to be a little bit, the aurora probably is going to be a little bit too bright. Um, over here on the left, this is probably about a 16 second exposure. Um, you can see you can already see the aurora pretty well. Um, but the aurora moves 
pretty quickly sometimes within that 60 seconds. So if you decrease the amount of time, the aurora won't be as bright, but you can see some more definition sometimes. So this picture over here on the right is probably about eight seconds. Again, super easy camera tripod, and then uh, eight seconds to 16 seconds for your pictures. Okay, so um, advancing a little bit, uh, you could get a camera that has the um, ISO option. So what does that mean? Okay, so ISO is one of the options here in your menu. So now, even though we're going a little bit more um, advanced, out of all these things on this menu, again, all you're using is shutter speed and ISO. And that's really all you need to change or even know about on your uh, menu here, pretty much for any night sky photography that you're gonna do. Um, if you really wanna start learning about some of this other stuff when you get more advanced, you can, but you really don't have to. Um, and then here, this is the Android phone that Jessica has, um, and she can change the ISO on that pro mode um, on her camera. So with the ISO, um, the greater the number for the ISO, um, the more light is going to be collected. Uh, kind of like with time exposure, the longer your time exposure, the more light is going to be collected and the more stars that you're gonna see. Um, so this is another thing that you can kind of uh, play with depending on what you want your picture to look like. If you want it to look really bright and to see the foreground really well, you can have a really high ISO. Um, if you want your sky to look a little bit darker, um, then you can pick a little bit lower ISO. Um, so that's just something that you can just kind of choose uh, for your preferences. Okay, a little bit more advanced, but not really needing any more really super advanced uh, technology. Okay, so this is um, lighting in the foreground. Uh, now, a lot of pictures, I'm not going to lie to you, if you look at them and they're the night sky pictures with a really pretty uh, lit up foreground, um, they might be photoshopped, but there is a way to get this lit up photo ground without needing photoshop. Um, so here, again, this is down at Bryce Canyon, so it would normally be pitch black, but the moon is out and it is lighting up these rocks right here. So the moon is lighting up the rocks, um, but it's still pretty dark, so I can still see some stars pretty well. Um, so, yeah, so that's one way that you can light up the foreground, just use the moon with some natural light. Um, you can also just use a flashlight to light up things that you want. So I have this really dark sky here. You can see the pitch black. The moon definitely was not out this night. Everything's really pitch black. Um, but I did just shine a flashlight on this little prairie dog sign and horse sign because I thought they were cute. Again, no Photoshop. Okay, if you want to get Photoshop, again, I did not have Photoshop for many, many years, um, then you, you can get it to kind of make some changes to your pictures that you wouldn't um, be able to otherwise with just your camera. So for instance, this picture right here, um, this green stuff here, um, that's called air glow. Um, it's something that happens in our atmosphere sometimes when it's uh, when you're in a really dark place. So I made this green pop out more than it did in the regular picture. Um, and then I also made the Milky Way a little bit more blue. Um, and this is the Andromeda galaxy right here. Um, I made that a little bit, bit brighter. Um, so that is something that you can do if you want to go and start using Photoshop, but again, definitely do not have to. Okay, so next, astrophotography. So this is taking pictures through a telescope. Okay. Again, you can use your phone uh, if your phone is able to change time exposure. You can get a phone mount for your telescope, actually. Um, and you can really use uh, most any telescope, except it needs to have a computerized um, mount. So um, 
the sky is going to be moving while you're out there taking pictures. So when you have your telescope looking at a very small part of space, um, it's going to move through the field of view unless you have your telescope tracking the night sky. So that's why you need a computerized mount if you're going to be taking long pictures. Now the moon, you don't necessarily need to take super long pictures to take a good picture of the moon. Um, I'll show you that an example of that in a second. Um, so you don't really need a computerized mount to take things or take a picture of the moon with your phone. Um, but for dimmer objects um, that you may want a longer exposure for, you're going to want um, a tracking tripod. So again, these are all taken with the, this was actually with the cell phone and the cell phone mount, uh, mounted on a telescope. Again, no Photoshopping. Here we have Saturn. And then Jupiter, you can see the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. And then again, a little bit closer look at Jupiter um, and you can see the stripes in Jupiter's atmosphere. So that is with the cell phone and cell phone mount. Uh, you can also use your DSLR. Um, so here we have DSLR. Um, you have to buy a special adapter specific to your DSLR camera and the type of telescope that you have. Um, so that's what this black tube is. Um, and so this is a picture that was taken of the moon with a DSLR camera and our camera and telescope mount. So just like with the night sky photography, um, with the astrophotography, you can also play around with ISO and time exposure if you would like. Um, so in this top row, we have the moon. Um, and the ISO is the same, actually, for all of these pictures, ISO 200, which is pretty low. Um, but then you can see what the moon looks like with different time exposures. So this is 1 uh, 320th of a second. So that's already pretty quick. But the moon is still really bright. <laughs> so this is why I was saying that you don't necessarily need a tracking mount to take pictures of the moon, because to get a nice balanced picture of the creators of the moon that's not too bright, you're going to be taking a really fast picture anyway. Um, so depending on what you want your moon to look like, um, you can do different time exposures for that. And then again, the ISO, the greater the ISO, the more light will be collected uh, for your picture that you are taking. And here is a picture of a star cluster uh, that Jessica took with her Android phone um, and telescope. No. I'm still super proud of that picture. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Um, trying to think if there's anything um, I would say for night sky photography, as she was saying, um, a tripod is needed because a lot of times you are taking, you know, 10, 20, 30 second exposures. If you're holding it, your natural shaking, because no one's perfectly still, um, is going to cause the image to be shaky. And that's why you need a tripod for that sort of thing. Um, for astrophotography through the telescope. Um, I think if you're doing moon or even planets, really, you don't necessarily have to have a tracking telescope. So if you watched our show on Wednesday, um, those telescopes that we recommended for beginners, um, that can be used to take these first images of like the moon and planets. In fact, um, I have done that quite a bit with our little Dobsonian telescope. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to get super fancy to get started uh, and it's really easy and like she's you saw I did several pictures with just my phone and that little I think the mount that I have costs like $19 to attach my cell phone to the eyepiece uh, and you don't even have to have that 
Uh, you can just hold your phone up to the eyepiece, but I tend to be pretty shaky, uh, so I can't always hold it steady. Uh, and that's where that comes in. In fact, if you've watched any of our telescope streams, we've done a couple this past year, that was done with that cell phone mount and my phone. Like, I mean, and it's it doesn't take a lot of fancy equipment. And you can get some really cool stuff. Like I said, that, that picture of the cluster, I'm still pretty proud of. Yeah. Um, again, just, you know, be careful when you go out there to look for guides about how to do this kind of astrophotography because again people are going to want to list like all this stuff that you need and make it really complicated and it can get really easily overwhelming but again it doesn't have to be that way it can yeah. be this easy yeah and then once you get a feel for it and you start wanting to get some more fancy stuff then you can but just to get started yeah, not much. And it's fun and really cool. And then you get to show off to everyone the awesome pictures that you've taken. Like, I'm pretty sure I've used that picture of the Aurora that Lindsay's taken for quite a few things. Oh, um, there's the Andromeda Galaxy. So you can see that. From oh, cool. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Um, let's see if we ended up with any questions. Which nope. I don't think we have any right now. Nope. No questions. Um, if you do have any questions for us, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Uh, and while we take a minute to see if any of those questions come in, um, just a few things. I know that we mentioned on Wednesday that one of the things we've been wanting to do and weren't able to do over last summer because of COVID was having, um, like, bring your own telescope star parties so that we could help people um, set up the telescopes and learn how to use them and things like that. And going along with that, we also want to do, have been wanting to do some like beginner astrophotography, like hands-on stuff um, where you could come up and put your cell phone on our cell phone mount and take pictures through the telescope or bring your DSLR and we can help show you how to use it. Uh, Cause I know the menu that Lindsay showed not all cameras menus are going to look exactly the same um and so just if that's something that you are very interested in um that is that is a, a fun program that we are hoping to run in the future uh, i don't know if it's going to happen this summer we got to wait and see how things are going to go um but once we get back to kind of normal operations that is definitely something we're going to start hosting um hopefully pretty regularly so I know it's something we all love to do and want to share that with everyone. And Duluth is such a great place for stargazing. I mean, we are a little city, but you don't have to go that far out to get some really good dark views. Um, not even really too far out of the city itself. I mean, Brighton Beach is still pretty much within. Yeah. Hawk Ridge, not that far out. I mean, so yeah, just want to share that um so um let's see I'm not seeing any other questions so let's give you a little bit of what's coming up over the next week um on wednesday we are going to take a look at the star wars universe uh, this is a show that eli has been working on um and we're going to look at is the science in star wars fact or fiction um it's a a little bit of both, uh, but we'll take a look at what's plausible and what's really just made up. And then next Saturday, we are going to do um, our third installment of our exploration series and look at dark matter and dark energy. These are things that we have talked about somewhat in some of our previous shows, but never really gone into a lot of detail. Uh, and so we want to use the show to really kind of delve into that and talk about uh, how, what these things might be, how we know that they exist in the universe, all of that. Um, and then lastly, uh, I want to remind everyone of our Astronomy Day coming up in just under a month, May 22nd. Uh, it's gonna be from two to 4 p.m. We're gonna be set up outside the planetarium 
uh, and we're going to pass out activity kits with, uh, I think we have three activities that are going to be in it that are all centered around kind of exploring how astronomers study the universe and giving you tips and tools and tricks to be able to do that yourself from your own backyard. Um, one of the fun projects or one of the fun activities, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it a little bit, is being able to make your very own Hubble Space Telescope. And along with that, uh, you'll also learn all about what Hubble does um, and lots of fun stuff there. So we're very excited um, to have a more in-person astronomy day than we were able to do last year since it was all virtual. And we hope that you are excited too when you come out and join us. Uh, we'll have lots of other fun stuff as well, uh, including some um, demonstrations that you can watch from a safe social distance um, and a raffle. And you can find out all the information on our website or I've also got it linked in the video description. All right, well, I think that's about wraps it up. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Go out, enjoy the rest of the beautiful day that we have, and we will see you again next time. Bye everyone.